We're out here on Hirschfelden today in the Hunter Classic, switching it up with another competition hunt. And after seeing a bunch of good sized Fallow Deer posted around the community, I just wanted to come and hunt this map and there happens to be a Fallow Deer competition running. We're actually entered in competitions for all three deer species on this map, Red Deer, Roe Deer, and Fallow Deer. The Roe Deer and Red Deer both require like a tree stand or a shooting tripod rest. The Fallow Deer is just really any circumstance shooting the highest scoring one. So we're starting off at what has been normally a pretty good fallow stand. We'll call around a bit, see if anything comes in, and then kind of move on from here. Not a whole lot going on at the tree stand over there, unfortunately. A couple of roe deer does. However, a couple hundred meter walk, and we've got our first roe deer buck coming in. Now, in this particular case, setting up the shooting tripod's not going to be necessary. That's going to be nowhere near big enough to place in a competition, so we'll go with the snake bite bow here, but I think it is going to be interesting with the red deer and the road deer, unless we are close to a tower or a tree stain, ground blind, anything that, anything that we have placed, we're going to have to kind of have the tripod ready in case we run into basically a, a buck or a stag that would be big enough to place, and in certain scenarios, we could wait until we spot it, but in a spot like this, it was going to be tough, you never know exactly where the road deer might emerge, and it was just good to have it set up, so I think that'll be an interesting little wrinkle to this hunt, trying to make sure that we have a spot where we can place the tripod anytime that a stag or buck calls, but in that case, using the bow and staying silent definitely is the better move. Now that is pretty encouraging, I want to say that's a 240s rack, but we'll get a closer look and confirm. Spotting estimate generally would say that it might even be a 230s rack. Definitely a nice red deer, but not exactly huge. I don't think necessarily that's worth taking with a gun either and kind of spooking everything off. Even though it is a good stag, it's not going to be top three in a competition like this. I would assume at least 265, 266 is what we want. And this would be a perfect scenario of spot in the distance, set up the shooting tripod and take it if it was a little bit bigger, but for this, I think we'll also call it in and get it with the bow. But I am kind of curious to see what this guy scores. He's definitely a little bit uneven, getting to see some of the classic true Rex influence there. 24 meters with the snake bite should be perfectly doable. And in theory, we could sit here and try to get all the hinds as well. We'll just kind of start crawling forward, maybe take one or two more as we go. But I don't want to stay and keep on calling in hinds. The expected result there with the bow was to actually send the hinds running basically the same way they would run if we were to just walk right to the stag, but I mean, we can get the kills and move along. Now that is the reason that I brought the snake bike today. It is the quietest bow in the game. It's got a lot of power behind it. And in a scenario like red deer or fallow deer that are herd animals, sometimes you almost have to take an animal that's towards the front of the herd. And if you can get away with not spooking things in the back, you can really have a much better hunt. You can get more kills in general. You may have something even at the back of the herd, maybe over a hill that you haven't seen yet. And if you can keep that silence, sometimes something like that happens and you have a trophy waiting at the back of the herd. At this point, I guess we'll just crawl along and take the fourth one as well. Might as well not spook anything if we can get away with it. I was sure once we started crouching forward and taking fairly quick shots, we'd spook them, but they all hung around but we'll try to make shot number four here. And I mean, if we can get away with not spooking a single thing, that of course is the ideal. Now it looks like we will do exactly that. So we'll try to go fairly quickly through and claim these. I don't like to hit resume game until the no score or the score on a male pops up. Sometimes that can get a little bit laggy and I don't know if that has anything to do with sometimes the score never calculating. And we actually did spook that little roadier buck out there, but like I said, the original thought behind taking this tag was that we were going to be spooking things anyway, so that's all good. As for this guy, I mean, he's got to be like a 238 or so. You don't really see this rack much below that. Right lung, liver, stomach, and intestine 235, though. That might be the smallest red deer I've ever taken with that particular rack, which is interesting, but definitely nowhere near competition winner level. Well, the good news is... Just over an hour into the hunt, we finally have a fallow buck. The bad news is, it's that particular fallow buck, so not exactly a competition winner. Probably, if I had to guess, it'll be the very last place for any 
entry for the fellow competition so far, but good to at least see a fellow buck. Now these actually I think have a name change in the first siphon, it happened a while ago, I just haven't hunted fellow since they did it. I believe they're now called chocolate for that first type, which actually fits a whole lot better. But we'll try to get in here and make sure we at least make a good shot with the bow so we don't have to track him. And maybe we can start to find some more fallow after that. Now I will say in terms of making a decent shot, I did at times seem to struggle with some of the frontal angles, so I don't know if that is going to continue. I seem to remember using a lot of like the recurve and the uh, longbow, but kind of similar situation, although that is a long shot, not a insta drop. He shouldn't go too far, at least the snake bite did a little bit better, but we are going to have to track him even after trying to make sure that wouldn't happen. So finally, for our first fellow buck of the hunt, I don't imagine this is going to be a very big score. You see the chocolate fur type now, 42.8 on a solid 10 CSS. It was a right lung and shoulder blade shot, so I'm going to assume that was on me and the shot placement. It did I guess we did a mission there, that's always a plus, but it did seem to me, at least at the beginning when Fallow came out, that there might have been like a hitbox issue with the frontal shots, as I said. At least with that particular shot, it seemed fine. Just probably were off a little bit on the placement. No way. Well, it, it's not ex Wait a minute. What is happening? There are two piebald Fallow deer in that same herd? Okay, <laughs> they're both does, which is kind of unfortunate. Now, as far as I'm aware, rare fallow deer aren't nearly on the same level as some other rares, you know, rare whitetail, rare red deer, for instance, just other deer species, um, but two in the same herd. I don't know that that qualifies as a super rare, but we might attempt to get it as such. Now, we just saw some kind of shooting struggles with the snake bite bow, but we can attempt, kind of going back to the same logic that we had with the Red Deer earlier, we have a Silent Bow, we might be able to put it to use. Now the thing that is so shocking to me about this isn't necessarily that there are two in the same herd, it's that I haven't had a rare Fallow Deer at all yet. And the first time we do, there are two of them, side by side. I wish there was a buck in there or something, and I also kind of wish we had like a tree stand. There is a ground blind back here. Or actually, can you call in fallow deer does? I don't know, because with the uh, antler rattler collar, at least with reindeer, you can't call in females. There has to be a male in the herd that kind of the females follow that into the call. I don't know if they're coming in or if they're just kind of wandering around. So what we actually have for a gun today is the 30R. It might be feasible as a double barrel that's got a, a pretty quick follow-up to take them both that way. Or if we can just kind of get out in front of them. We'll, we'll see what happens here, but I didn't consider that factor. I don't know that we can call them in. Okay, that is a huge wild boar. I don't know what is going on here. I'm afraid he's going to bluff charge. Definitely not. That might be a 1,000 plus wild boar. A 195 kg heart shot him. 1136. You know what's really unfortunate? The reason we're carrying the 30R is because there's a wild boar comp that requires a 30R kill. And that would be like second place. It's a huge boar, uh, no complaints. And I, I don't know that that would be big enough to stay. That's pretty cool. This one spot on Hirschfelden has all the cool things apparently. We'll try to make this fairly quick because of course we have some fallow deer to go and find. They definitely are not coming into the call. So we're going to have to try to go and locate them I guess, track them down and I'm really thinking the 30R may apply more there so we'll kind of see how we can do. But I think for now that will work right into the nose and through to the heart. And I don't even know what tracks I might be on, but I really don't know where they went. I took my time trying to cross the water and took it really slow. And they seem to have wandered off. That's one of the tracks we need. The question is where they go. 
Well, that's one of them. Pretty close to us. The other, though, is kind of far off. They almost need to be together if we want to try to get them in the same trophy shot, which would be pretty neat. I don't know. In theory, they should kind of try to travel together, but the problem is, it's tough to say which one's going to go in which direction. Now, the one further out is kind of coming this way. That doesn't mean they're going to get that close together, and again, with no ability to call them in, it really is kind of down to what direction they decide to move in. If they were to get close enough together that it might be feasible with the 30R, I would consider taking the shots. If we don't get them in the same trophy shot, it's not going to be that big a deal, but, you know, when the opportunity arises for something like this, it's good to at least try it. And they do seem to be kind of wandering towards each other, so maybe if this closer one kind of scoots out there farther, maybe we can make it happen? Fallow deer are interesting. They, they do a lot of roaming around, not a lot of sitting still. I mean, that's not really close enough. One other thing we could do, I don't know why that rock just launched us forward. We could shoot the one in the back first, and maybe the closer one kind of runs towards it. I just don't know, but I, I think we're going to try it. They are fallow deer does after all, and they're kind of close there. <laughs> If we could have hit that shot, that would have been it. That would have done it. In theory, if we wanted this super badly, we could track the other doe, spend forever, try to get it back over here, and try to get them in the same trophy shot, but like I said, their fallow deer does were kind of here for competitions, and I didn't want to spend all day just doing this, so we'll, we'll hopefully get them separately. I'm going to say it should be this track that we need for the other piebald so kind of unfortunate we couldn't get them down side by side i really don't know if it would have qualified as a super rare but again just given the rarity of fallow deer compared to other deer i don't think it's really on the same level so i'm perfectly happy to not have to even worry about that as for trophy shots though that is something we will worry about because they are still our first well for now just our first fallow rare i don't want to get too uh, presumptuous about getting the next one till we have it down and actually by the way technically with super rares because we have video footage and we could take a screenshot of the two side by side in the herd that could still qualify for the super rare gallery but i definitely don't intend to submit them especially because we couldn't make that shot if we hit that follow-up it kind of turned right as we shot or maybe i didn't go far enough right uh with the scope to take that shot right as we did I really think the angle we had, and the 30R being as powerful as it is, that would have probably dropped it. And maybe then, if it would have qualified, and like I said, I, I don't know for Faladir, maybe I would have submitted it, but it's, uh, it's not as cool since we couldn't make that shot. And if there was one buck in that herd, it's a completely different scenario calling them in, but I'm just pretty pleased to have actually found a rare fallow, even if it doesn't have antlers. So finally... We've got the other piebald coming in, and the one thing I did say about trying to not spend all day uh, just to get them in the same trophy shot, it was getting borderline spending all day just trying to track this one down. It took quite some time. I don't even know what it was. Actually, I hadn't even clicked on the tracks. I guess a hurdle wild boar and some roadie went through here. There were so many tracks, I couldn't even find the next one, and then suddenly she walks out of the trees right in front of us, but... Pretty cool to have gotten to in the same herd. I haven't had anything like that probably since the two albino red deer hides in like 2016. And even those weren't technically in the same herd. But in that particular case, we were able to call them in and take them with the bow. And that was a whole lot easier. Now, I, I want to maybe go back in slow motion the first shot. Because I thought this fellow, the second one, it took long enough to turn and run away that had they been side by side, it would have been feasible to just get two quick shots off. Now that, of course, is really risky because after that, you don't have a follow-up with a double barrel rifle like the 30R. So it could have been risky, but I kind of wish we had had the opportunity to try that instead. It was just one of those things where tracking a couple of does for forever uh, definitely wasn't going to win us any competitions. It is really cool. And like I said, if we absolutely wanted to, if it even does qualify, 
we technically have what we need to enter it for the super gallery. I, I just don't think that's something I'm going to end up doing. I, I actually think they even made it to where you could only have three entries, at least for a while. And I kind of think we already have three entries. So it might not have even mattered at the end of the day, but what matters most, I suppose, is the fact that we actually had all that happen on video. And uh, that's going to be something pretty cool to, to go back and see is the, the two rares walking side by side in the same herd. In the meantime, we still have yet to find a buck that scores above 50. So hopefully we can cross that off the list after getting at least a borderline super rare. So it's officially taken us just under two hours to get a fallow buck with any kind of palmation. And it's not exactly a lot, but in a weird kind of twist of events here, they were all together on that side of the water. For some reason, they split up. The one that we just shot went to the right. The rest went all the way around to the left and are coming in from this side. I don't think he heard that shot. There's a particular kind of animation when they know you're there and they stare at you with like no movement whatsoever and I kind of see a little bit of head bobbing in the breathing. So I think he is still just coming in out there at 40 meters. And I guess, much like the Red Deer earlier, we'll just take whatever we can get here. And I could be wrong, but I actually think this one is a little bit bigger, so probably best that it worked out to where we can at least get a shot of both. We'll kind of see if we can do better with a frontal shot. That went just fine. And they're still going to keep on coming in. There is, I think, two bucks here. One about the size of the one we got earlier, and one that is technically a little bit bigger, but not by a whole lot. I don't know, they don't even appear to have any idea that a shot happened. Sometimes you can end up shooting a deer and they'll sort of hear the bow, but they don't know that you're there. I don't even see that this time it, it kind of happened. He was sniffing, kind of looking up in the air a little bit, but even still, continuing to come in. Now, we are actually out of arrows, so maybe shooting all the red deer earlier was a bad idea, but we'll go 30R here. I think this is going to be our last kill anyway. It's been a pretty wild hunt. I would not have expected that to be the shot that doesn't drop a deer, but got him down quick enough. And let's go through here and see what we have. First fallow deer, I think the second biggest out of the three, but we shall see. Double lung at 10 meters, 99.9. .9. I certainly hope the other one is a little bit bigger than that. Hopefully, I don't know, 110 or so. Not that it's really going to matter for the competition, but it is at least nice to get better scores. 101 for that guy. He was bigger, but not by enough to really make much difference. Then we had the tiny one. Shot basically straight through him with a bow. 45.2, which actually means even that was bigger than the one that we got at the beginning. And finally, this one over here, which I'm surprised that was a body hit from the 30 yard. Maybe that was just shot placement. 70.5. And one thing I noticed there, I'm kind of curious to see if that ever happens again. With four dead fallow, our frame rate absolutely died. I don't know if there's something going on with fallow deer. Maybe when you have a bunch of them down, that causes frame issues, but that was kind of interesting to see. But what a bizarre hunt. Two hours. And really, outside of wherever that would have been, somewhere over in here, I think, if we didn't go to that particular area at that particular time, we might not have anything special. But in the end, two piebald fallow does and an 1136 wild boar which again I didn't want to spook the fallow deer by shooting it with the gun I probably didn't have time to get the gun and take the scope off which is probably what would have been needed with him charging that particular competition to quickly explain it before we wrap up it required a 30 r shot with 100% harvest value and no tree stands blinds anything like that so it would have had to be an instant drop and that would have been a little bit tough with him charging us but there's like 14 hours left, and that would be comfortably in second place. So a little unfortunate, but nice to get a good-sized trophy, even without a competition uh, trophy to go along with it, with our couple of pie balls. But anyway, that is officially going to do it for this video. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.